backwards. And then you do this, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do that. And then I take over. Mm -hmm. There you go. I probably won't have a mic at this I mean a mask at this point, so if you want to pull your mask down so you can be ready, I'll be ready. this microphone and the same thing I highlighted in your bulletin is going to be right here okay and you can use this microphone and point it right at your face you're going to talk loud and proud and you're going to read this prayer 
Do you want to practice reading it? Do you want to practice behind the stage and practice reading it? Okay. And then as soon as you say amen, then you just walk back this way. morning. Welcome to worship today. A couple things to highlight before we get started this morning. Uh, first of all, Steve Sachs is our uh, vice president of the board, and after the service, he'll be in the narthex, 
and have some information at a table. Let's see if you're considering your time and talent sheets. And remember, next week is our commitment Sunday, so uh, bringing in our pledges and our time and talent sheets, what, how we uh, feel called to serve. And so he'll be uh, in the narthex following the service, and you're welcome to stop by if you want information on um, the board or committees in any way that um, he can help you with, with ideas on serving. And that would be true for those on tuning in via live stream today as well if you want to contact the office if you're interested in participating. Um, for the scripture readings today, we have the fourth suffering servant song in the uh, prophet Isaiah. So we look forward to hearing that. And we recognize Jesus in, in what is described there by Isaiah. And then in the gospel reading, James and John um, ask for the position of honor next to Jesus on his left and right. And so we get to hear how Jesus responds to that. And then finally, we have youth helping with the service today, helping lead. And were you going to say something or no, you're not? Um, so we look forward and um, we'll enjoy having our youth help lead service today. And with that, we'll begin with our confession and hearing the proclamation of forgiveness. And I get to have some help today. Let us confess our sins. What is it? Oh. Please stand. I get to begin and then you. you no, nope, I've got my own. <laughs> You're good. You're good, Bergen. Uh, this is Bergen, by the way. She's loving this opportunity. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose word is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes, welcomes us with an open heart. Uh, God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and repression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin and forgive us all. Listen when we call out to you for help. We inspire your love for all our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Seated. John Bergen.
Christ, the Lord of God, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom, and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. This reading is from the last of four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Christians are probably most familiar with this servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant healing ministry and redemptive suffering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of, the, of Christ. Who has believed in our message and whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our inquiries. The, punish, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we, we are healed all like sheep that have gone astray. Each, each of us have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the, inqui the inquity of all, or of us all, was he was oppressed and afflicted, yet, yet did he not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before it shear shears, it is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of many people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and, the, and with the rich in, in his death thought he had, or though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And through the Lord's and through the Lord makes his, his life an offering for sin. He will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the Lord will prosper in his hand. After, his, after, he, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. knowledge. By righteousness and servant will justify many as he will bear their inquiries. Uh, Therefore, I will give him a proportion among the great, and he will divide his spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numb with the transgressions, for he bore with the many of sins, and made ingression for the tra transgressors. Using imagery from the scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as the great high priest who is obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. Hebrews 5, 1-10. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son, and today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, 
He offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. He was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. gospel today is from the 10th chapter of Mark, beginning at verse 32. They were on their way to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen. We are going to, up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him, him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered him. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with, but to sit at my right hand or, or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the 10 heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know, though, you know that those who are regarded as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise, exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. Be Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, since this is Youth Sunday, I'd like all the youth to come on up. Young and old, anybody, just come on up. I hope I brought enough treats. Ooh, good morning. Oh my goodness, this is so different. You know, we all have our masks. You guys are getting used to it at school right now, right? Yeah, pretty, pretty used to wearing the mask. I know at the end of the day, my ears hurt. You guys, there's ears hurt from wearing it all day. Yeah. All right. So let me start off with a little story. Um, my daughter, Julia, who is 19, and she's currently at the universe, or Oregon State University. Ooh, I met, almost messed that one up. At Oregon State University. And she's a gymnast. Now, when Julia was all your ages, um, she would go to competitions. And what happens when you win a competition? What do you think you get? What do you think? A trophy? Yeah, a trophy or a, a medal? Okay, so I had to pick some. I mean, she's got 4,000 of these in her room. But, you know, um, let's see. This one was for first place on beam at regionals, so it's a gold medal, right? This one, first place on floor at state, and it's a gold medal, okay? And this one I can't read because I don't have my glasses on, but this was, we went to California one time and, and she won a medal for whatever she did there. Now, it's fun to win medals, isn't it? 
Okay. Do you think she won those medals just because she showed up? No, no, she had to work hard. She had to like sacrifice time with friends, right? And she had to suffer some injuries. Well, today's story is about James and John. Did I get that right? James and John. And James and John went to Jesus and they said, hey Jesus, when we, you know, when we go to the kingdom of God, we'd like a special honor. We want to sit to your left and to your right. And Jesus said, are you willing to suffer like I am going to suffer? Because we all know what happened to Jesus, right? What happened with Jesus? Go for it. They crucified him. Excellent answer. Yeah, they crucified Jesus. And he got stones thrown at him. He got cursed. All kinds of things. All not fun, neat things. And Jesus says, are you willing to suffer the way that I would suffer? And they said, of course, we'll suffer the way you were, you know, you're willing to suffer. Um, and that brings me to my last point. You guys ever watched our man videos? What does he always say? Come on. So you see. So you see. It's, it's, I have a t-shirt. Um, I'm a big Darman fan. Um, and if you guys don't know who Darman is, that's okay. But uh, uh, he, he writes really inspirational uh, videos. And then at, at the end, they always say, so you see. Well, so you see, the kingdom of God isn't about recognition, praise, and the seed of honor, okay? When Julia wins these, she gets recognition. She gets praise. And that's okay. That's, that's a great thing. Congratulations. But we're here for a bigger purpose. Um, it's about service to others. What are some ways we can serve others? All right. You're my man today. We can help by giving them food and the food drives. Yeah, food and food drives. Anybody else got something we can do to help one another? Yeah. Charity. Charity. How about can we be nice to our brothers and sisters? Yeah, that's probably a pretty good thing. Can we put the dishes away? We always try to get my Sam to clean out the cat box, and that worked sometimes. But uh, um, so you see, God, let's see. To see what that means, all you have to do is look at the life that Jesus lived. He came not to be served, but to serve. And he gave his life so that we could, be, we could have eternal life. Okay? So when you said he was crucified, he died for us. All right. I have a treat for you guys. Thank you for coming up. But here, let's say a prayer real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, may we live like Jesus live the life of service to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. Thank you, Greg. It's almost like we planned this, I think. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So not today, but next week, um, the gospel reading will be the healing of blind Bartimaeus. And remember when we started uh, kind of this middle section of Mark, we were in chapter 9 a few weeks ago and and at the start of that section um, Jesus heals another man so I talked about this as kind of bookends for this middle section so a healing of a blind man on, on either side and then in the middle Jesus talks three times now about how he will go to Jerusalem and he will 
be arrested and he will be killed and he will rise again. So I think what that means is that Jesus gives sight to these men who are blind. The rest of us who think we can see find out that we are the ones who have been blind all along. And, and we see that as the disciples don't understand what Jesus is talking about. They can't conceive of what he means. And, and so the hope is that as we hear Jesus describe this, and now once we get to chapter 11 in a couple of weeks, or um, Jesus will in fact, his triumphal entry, and, and he will go to the cross and he will die for the sins of the world. And our prayer is to be able to see this and to understand what this means for us and how this changes everything for us. And so I invite you, as you think about this, to consider the paradigm in which we live. And Greg did a great job of, of illustrating what that was. And, and I think I was trying to characterize this as an Olympics sort of paradigm where we have medals, but we also have the, you know, at the end of each event, there's the, the medal ceremony and you have the pedestals, the three pedestals. And so the first place is raised above everybody else and then second place and third place is lower still. And I think we do this, we put people on pedestals who we decide is deserving in our eyes and we do this in all aspects of our world and it's just the way we operate. Now sometimes we don't like that and, and we kind of mumble and we grumble about that sometimes and I heard described this past week about a decision, well it came down from the top. And so maybe we grind our teeth a little bit because we don't want somebody else telling us what to do. And then at the same time, we're, we're jealous a little bit. We wish that we had that position. We wish we had that status for ourselves. So who's deserving? What's fair? And we spend a lot of time worrying about this with regard to others and, and for ourselves. So the kingdoms of the world, if you will, that operate this way, we have a view of status and position and power. We decide who is deserving and, and who we place as lords over us. Jesus describes this, he says, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. And I'm, I'm not sure why Jesus left out the, uh, why he singles out the Gentiles and didn't include the Jews in this, but Jewish society, I think, was very much this hierarchy as well, from the King Herod to the religious leaders who Later on, Jesus will criticize them. He says, you like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. And, and we heard this past week, some of us, that this is the wrong kind of power according to the way Jesus sees things. This is power over rather than the power to serve. And so this power over invariably leads to devouring widows' houses, Jesus said, and for, and, and for show, making lengthy prayers. So James and John are operating under this old paradigm, as are we. In an Olympics pedestal world, we raise up those who we see as deserving of honor, and we, we place on pedestals um, Fortune 500 companies, the Jeff Be Bezos of the world, the top seeds in the tournament, the top finishers in a competition, and the big and successful churches, which for us, that's synonymous, big and successful, are the same thing. But the whole context, the whole context of our gospel reading suggests that Jesus is about to usher in a new paradigm. And this new paradigm will give us a new way to live. From the third prediction of his death and resurrection to the exhortation that his disciples live with a different value system and a def different definition of success. Jesus says, but it is, it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. To want to serve rather than be served, to lay down our life and to love our neighbor. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. Let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. 
So three times Jesus talks about his death and resurrection as this new paradigm. And three times his disciples demonstrate that they are still living in the old paradigm. Peter rebukes Jesus. The disciples are arguing about who is the greatest, and James and John are requesting the places of honor. James and John seek this, uh, in this old understanding, they ask for the top spots next to Jesus, thinking of glory on the usual terms. And then the other ten, when they find out, they're angry because they too are operating with the same set of values. Maybe they're mad because because James and John thought of it first, and and they wish they had been the ones to ask. And and maybe they're, they're upset because now the only spots left are the second and third places on the pedestal. But Jesus will go on to demonstrate what this new paradigm of glory looks like, as he will shortly give his life as a ransom for many. Soon he will die on the cross for the sake of the world, and for for the sake of all those who live under this old paradigm of value and of deserving. A ransom that Jesus talks about, that was the price paid to free a slave. And so Jesus, through his death and resurrection, is freeing the world from slavery and from bondage to sin and death, and inviting all to believe in and to begin to live in this new paradigm that he establishes. Jesus' death and resurrection redeems us, purchases our freedom, and we are no longer enslaved to the old paradigm of power over. We have a new life and a new way of living it, the power to serve. Still thinking in the old way, James and John ask, grant us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those to whom it has been prepared. Their concept of glory is according to our usual way. They see pedestals and they want the top spot. Or if Jesus gets the top spot, they they at least want to be in second or third, but still on the medal stand. And then later, when Jesus is crucified, there are two rebels, one on his right and one on his left. In this very different concept of glory, the glory of the cross, the places of the honor on his left and on his right are for these two. It is for them that it has been prepared. And indeed, this is a new paradigm. Can you think of anyone more undeserving than these two? But they represent us. They are us. They are all of us who still live in the old paradigm of, and who have all fallen short of the glory of God. And so the other, one of the other readings today was Isaiah 53, which again is the fourth suffering, suffering servant song. And we heard that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We have all been busy living in the old paradigm. It is all we know, wanting and working for power over rather than the power that serves. It is for these two rebels and for us who also have rebelled against God that Jesus dies and is raised to new life so that we all have new life in his name and a new paradigm in which to live, the power to serve. Isaiah 53 says, The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear the iniquities of us all. So again, remember next week is the healing of blind Bartimaeus. Remember those bookends for this middle section. It is through Jesus' death and resurrection that we have been given new life and a new way to live. And our prayer is that we are able to see this and to begin to live this way. And so we pray, Lord God, shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire to always do your will. Amen. I'd like you to stand as we sing our next song.
Grounded in our faith in Jesus and serving our neighbor in love, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the, this pilgrim congregation and all who worship here. We pray for your blessing on us and that you would continue to lead us so that we proclaim your salvation in word and action. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the Islamic standard of Tacoma following an arson fire this past week. We are thankful that no one was injured. We pray for the person who started the fire and for all who, those inspired to violence towards others, that you would change their hearts and minds. Turns, turns all our hearts to you, Lord, and shows us your way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. We, pr we pray for the Little Pilgrim Preschool and their ministry to the families, to our community. Bless Jenny, Aaron, Amy, and as they teach. Bless the children in their classes. Bless the preschool board who helps to support this important ministry. Lord, in your mercy. As one who came not to be served, but to serve, we turn to you in prayer for all who work towards peace. We pray for the leaders of nations who lead with a servant's heart, bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places for refuge for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, as our, wor as our world continues to struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray that your spirit of peace comforts and heals healing would come among us. Help us to turn the tide and bring the number of new cases down and prevent further illness and death. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, we praise you for all who do the work of healing in mind and body and spirit. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, and any illness. We pray especially for Judy Bedard, and her family who they continue to grieve the death of her cousin Sylvia and we join to jump and we join them in thanksgiving for the good report that their niece Stephanie is cancer free. We also pray for the strength and support and healing for Julie, Gary and Doug Wisness and healing for Robin Robin Rideout uh, falling back surgery. Shine your grace on all who are in darkness and pain, suffering and despair. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers up to you, O God, trusting in fighting grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit uniting on one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. Bad combination mask and mic. Ponytails, I know how this goes. <laughs> Let's see. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, 
saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join me as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst are invited to come to this table to receive this meal, to taste and see that the Lord is good. So please come. You may be seated.
you stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with, sh with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, you are sent out to bring the word of hope to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, go with you and bless you now and forever. Amen. peace the living world dwells in me 